If you've decided to watch this video, most of you already know the OnePlus One. For those who don't, OnePlus is a recently founded company based out of China that has made just one phone and they've called it the One. The phone is the first of a kind in terms of the way it's built, the way it's designed and the kind of hardware that it houses inside. But that's not really what makes it different. What makes it different is the ability for the company to provide the handset at a price that most people can't even imagine. The OnePlus One is available in two variants, the 16GB as well as the 64GB. While the 16GB is priced at $299 US dollars and is available in a white color, the 64GB sandstone black that you see in front of you is priced at $349. The company is hell-bent into presenting itself into India and has aggressively started to set up shop in the Indian market. The OnePlus One is going to be here soon, so it's time that we review the OnePlus One. My name is Bharat Nagpal, let's see if this phone is actually going to be worth your money when it launches in India. Before we get into anything else, let's talk price. The OnePlus One is expected to launch for about 18 or 19,000 rupees in the Indian market for the 16 gigabyte variant, which puts it much higher than things like the Xiaomi Mi 3, however, much lower than competition devices that cost upwards of 40,000 rupees. The 64 gigabyte sandstone black variant is going to be available upwards of 23, 24,000 rupees, and it may not be the most wanted storage capacity between the two, but it should be. If we talk about specifications, the OnePlus One is basically loaded to the rim. We have a Qualcomm Snapdragon 801 chipset with 2.5 GHz on quad cores. We have the Adreno 330 GPU, 3 GB of onboard RAM, as well as, like I said, 16 and 64 GB of storage capacities. The front houses a 5.5 inch LTPS IPS display, which does have a 1920 by 1080 p resolution, giving it a massive 401 pixels per inch. This is almost identical to the iPhone 6 Plus display that has just been launched recently. The front also houses Corning Gorilla Glass 3 protection, basically giving you a toughened front glass, preventing scratches and additional damage to the device and giving it an overall sturdy look. While the device does have LTE bands, it is capable of GSM as well as 3G speeds, mostly globally. Some of the LTE bands are also compatible with India. For cameras, the back has a 13 megapixel camera with a Sony XMOS sensor. You have six lenses and an f2.0 aperture that basically gives you a great camera overall. The front has a 5 megapixel camera as well, and the main camera can capture 4K resolution video as well as 720p video at 120 frames per second, giving you the capability of making slow motion videos. Now, if you checked out our unboxing video, you would have seen that the box is mostly bare bones and all you get is a charger as well as a charging cable inside the box. This basically minimizes uh, costs for OnePlus, but in no way is the packaging low quality. In fact, it is one of the best packaging or the best boxes for phones that we've seen in quite some time. The OnePlus One does have bottom facing dual speakers is what the company calls it, but you get an effective and loud uh, speaker system, which gives you great volumes, whether you're watching videos or playing games. And the most interesting aspect of the OnePlus One has to be the fact that it runs Android 4.4, but with a layer of CyanogenMod. Now, Cyanogen Mod 11S is essentially the most customizable and most robust Android ROM that uh, we have seen uh, since the days of development of Android. Cyanogen Mod has an extensive developer community that allows you to download several themes, customizations, the ability to govern your speeds on your uh, CPU, gives you basically extensive capabilities of customizations, and it has a very big uh, developer support system. That being said, OnePlus has been really good at shipping out updates for the device. Between the time I got the phone to now, I have seen upwards of four updates that basically fix issues, improved overall speed, and basically removed any form of lag that we've seen from the device. That being said, the device does slow up from time to time and it does heat up quite a lot and eventually will slow down. And that is mostly to do with the software that Cyanogen as well as uh, the OnePlus One team are getting together and trying to fix. The ability to customize themes is wonderful on uh, the Cyanogen Mod 11S. You can basically pick up fonts from one theme, icons from another, as well as a wallpaper from another. You can get a different boot animation as well as uh, different styles from different, different themes and basically make your own very custom theme, which allows you to modify and twirl around the system 
and yet let it be Cyanogen Mod. You can download several launchers, of course, from the Google Play Store and completely remove the Cyanogen Mod experience, but I personally feel that it's one of the best uh, sort of Android experiences that you can find out there, barring the stock Android experience that you get on a Nexus. Now, like I said, performance is a little vary. Uh, while gaming as well as graphic intensive applications run beautifully on the OnePlus One, and we've seen no problems with that, Due to the finesse in the final software, I do see the device slow down from time to time and it does require sort of a reboot or maybe a rehaul. Uh, several RAM management applications have come in handy, but I've seen that only when I reboot the device uh, does it completely speed up and become normal. So that is one thing that has essentially uh, led me to believe that software is the main culprit here. Now, as far as phone networks are concerned, you get one single SIM card slot, which is a micro SIM card slot. Uh, you have a GSM, a WCDMA, which is essentially 3G GSM, and LTE bands, uh, which are mostly capable throughout the world, and you do get some LTE bands that will work in India eventually, uh, when LTE is finally available in our extensive market. Uh, but for now, 3G uh, speeds as well as network performance is one of the best that I've seen from most of these Android devices. I get networks even in areas most phones can't catch networks, and overall, the sound quality from the speaker as well as the microphone has given me no complaints. If you talk about the display, the 5.5 inch display is absolutely gorgeous. Whereas most people have been complaining about a yellow tint on their displays. Uh, I feel that uh, OnePlus has essentially fixed that issue and if people are still getting those, uh, the company is giving them warranty as well uh, and replacing those handsets, even though the replacement process is a little tedious. But we feel that if the display issue is there, you, you should be a little wary of uh, the handset that you get. However, in our case, we did not get a uh, defective display on uh, the device and it, it is uh, fantastic. It's Decently visible outdoors, but it's really well visible indoors. You have excellent viewing angles and great color reproduction. Almost no complaints with the display. It's large, it's wide, and with the ability of a Cyanogen mod, you'll see yourself typing faster and browsing web pages a lot better. And if you can make use of the full display, you'll be really happy and enjoying your experience with the device. So the display essentially makes up for most of uh, the experience on the OnePlus One and tied in with the Cyanogen Mod 11S, it gives you a complete experience overall. The cameras are nice. You get extensive uh, set of uh, filters as well as uh, the ability to shoot great pictures. Outdoor photography is amazing and uh, you can apply filters before you start taking pictures or video. Uh, which basically gives you an experience of uh, what the image is going to be after you click it. Pictures are saved uh, really well and uh, in high quality and you see extensive amounts of sharpness as well as uh, the right kind of color reproduction from the images. You can head on over to our full review on iGen.in to check out some of the image samples. We were really happy with the overall image experience that we found on the OnePlus One. The flash is a dual LED flash and it allows you to basically get the right kind of white balance in low light situations and we found that to be mostly accurate. Although the short throw distance of the flash is what will limit you and you won't be able to get a good long range photograph if it's really dark. Another thing that is really Really convenient about uh, Cyanogen Mod is the quick gesture system that you have and one of the gestures is the fact that you can draw a V on the screen to enable the flashlight. Uh, while this may be really convenient and I have personally used this uh, feature a lot myself, uh, it takes a while for the flashlight to kick in and sometimes in the pocket uh, the flashlight turns on. Although after the recent software update this hasn't happened as much. Uh, but it does happen once in a while. So uh, it, it's better off that you go into the settings and turn the gestures off if you're not really going to be using them. Design-wise, the OnePlus One is slightly big. However, the sandstone finish is absolutely wonderful and it's like no other finish that we've seen on any phone till date. It feels absolutely wonderful in the hand and it gives you that additional grip that you'd never want to put a case or a skin over this uh, back. It also gives you the ability to sort of trust in your phone a little bit more that even if you drop it on the back, you, it won't easily get damaged. And so is the case. I mean, if you drop it, the back panel does not easily get damaged, even though it looks like this uh, finish would easily scratch off. It's a lot more rugged than it looks like and it gives you a really good phone with a really good and rugged sort of build quality. The front, however, has Gorilla Glass 3, but I would recommend getting a screen protector on there because of a large surface. It easily tends to scratch, and I've seen a bunch of scratches 
uh, from general day-to-day -day use a pop-up on the screen of the phone. So a screen protector would be recommended if you want to not have those uh, teeny tiny scratches that come from keys or anything that is in your pocket, even pens. This would definitely improve uh, the experience. The device is super slim, uh, but it's not the slimmest device we've seen. At 8.9 millimeters for a 5.5 inch size, it is pretty slim and it feels really comfortable in the hand. Even if you have small hands, you'll enjoy using this phone with both your hands because of the simple fact that it feels really great in the hand, especially the sandstone black variant. Now, one downside for the 16 gigabyte variant is that you don't get uh, expandable storage, which will essentially let you down to the fact that you would be restricted to the amount of storage that is on the device. Therefore, getting the 64 gigabyte variant has dual advantage. A, you get that brilliant sandstone black back panel, as well as the fact that you get 64 gigabyte storage, which should essentially be more than enough for anyone in today's day and age to carry around their music, videos, games, etc., whatever they need to. Now, OnePlus is going to be giving out a lot of uh, back panels as well, starting from wood, uh, grain finish, denim, leather, XYZ, uh, but those aren't easily available to buy or to ship to India. The biggest problem with the OnePlus One right now is that despite the invite system, the fact that it takes a really long time or you have to really struggle to find an invite for the device, they do not ship to markets like India. And the company is setting up shop and they will be bringing the phone to India, but it's going to be significantly more expensive thanks to taxes and custom duties than what it is priced at presently on their website. All that being said, uh, with the overall gaming experience and the overall usage experience that I've got from the OnePlus One, I would say it is one of the best phones uh, to buy and it is an absolute bang for your buck if this smartphone space is what you're looking at. For under 25,000 rupees, a 64 gigabyte handset which runs Qualcomm Snapdragon 801 with a full HD 5.5 inch display, a brilliant back finish and an excellent camera that records 4K video. This essentially compares to the G3 Sans, the 2K display, giving you a complete flagship experience for half the price. I would say that if you have the ability to wait on a little longer, the OnePlus One is the phone that you should be buying if you want a brilliant Android phone experience for half the price that you would pay otherwise. This basically takes on anything in that price bracket and almost double its price bracket. It's called the OnePlus One. They should have just called it two because it's the power of twice for half the price. This has been Bharat Nagpal, guys. If you have any questions or queries, drop them in the comment section below. Check out the full review on iGan.in and catch us on Facebook, Twitter, Google+. Make sure you hit that like button and subscribe to our channel to get the daily dose of tech. This has been Bharat Nagpal. I'll see you in the next one.